I know I always say this is my favorite design, but this one really is my favorite design. Hey everybody, Tom the Colorblind Quilter here and you are watching This Is How You Quote It, where we are on design number 11, the diamond grid. Ooh. Now, the diamond grid makes me think of those padded gilet jackets that have the diamond quoting on them. And I just, I love this design. Love it, love it, love it. I love it because it adds texture to a quilt. I, I'm a big fan of texture and quilting. I also love how you can use this grid to emphasize square blocks or circular blocks in a quilt and use the diamond shapes to really emphasize parts and draw the eye into it. Now you're probably looking at this and thinking, okay, so where's the angled line of my ruler? But you don't need any angled lines. I'm gonna show you a way to do this without using any angles. Now I did mention in the last video that I would be sharing with you two versions of this. So I've already showed you this one. This is the less dense version. And then I have a much denser version which is great for wall hangings and table runners. And so I'm gonna be showing you both of those during this video. The difficulty rating, I give this a three out of five. A confident beginner would be quite happy to do this because there's no angles. It's actually based on a straight line grid, so it's actually a doddle. In terms of the snuggle rating, I would say this one is a three out of five. It's still a fairly stiff design, okay? Uh, because the lines are pretty close together because it's a small block. This one, I would say is five, you know, it doesn't want to bend or move very much. This is a five. So you can say that this is between three and five depending on how dense you make this. You could probably get this down to a two by putting these really far apart, but we'll talk about that in a bit. So let's look at the prep and see how to do this without worrying about angles. I'm using a clover white fine marking pen. It's a bit like a Polaroid picture that it takes a couple of seconds to appear. So don't worry if you can't see it on camera just yet. Now with my trusty six inch by 12 inch ruler, Find the two and a half inch line along the edge of the block, line here, the line here. Take the hand, push it down on top of the ruler, placing pressure down through the fingers because we don't want the ruler to shift up or down. You don't need to be so tight that your fingers are white knuckles, but just enough to keep pressure. Next thing, I don't like starting and coming down because it does this. So I like to draw up towards the line and I like to work down towards the bottom edge, and that stops the fabric puckering, okay? Start here, draw up. Start here, draw down. I go over this a couple of times with this pencil just to make sure I get a good line. Two and a half and two and a half is five. Scooch that ruler over to the five inch line. is lined up with the edge of the block. The two and a half inch line is on the line that I just drew. Again, pressure from above, starting in the middle. Up, down, down. Now, this ruler is only six inches wide, so I can't scooch over to get the next line. I've got two choices. I can flip 180 degrees, find the two and a half inch line, line it up on the edge, boom. So if you want to be a little bit more efficient, take your ruler and find the two and a half inch mark and line it up with the line that you just drew. Find the five inch mark and line it up with the very first line on the left side. The top and bottom are lining up with the edge of the block and draw your line. Okay, so now we have three lines spaced two and a half inches apart. Next, we want to flip 90 degrees and we're going to repeat this, but this time the lines are only two inches apart. So line up the two inch line with the edge of the block, line up the top and the bottom with the edge of the block. So a little bonus tip here, these lines that you can see running horizontally, we're going to make sure that they line up with lines on my ruler. And so that will make sure that I'm staying straight as I run across. And that will make sure that I stay straight as I work my way across the block. Again, making sure these lines are lining up. Pressure and draw your line. Great stuff. Now to get the diamonds, it's exactly the same way again. We're going to draw intersecting lines that are gonna go across the quilt. And there's far less lines to draw here, but we're gonna start with one of the shorter lines just to get used to this. We're gonna make sure that the ruler is intersecting here, it's touching this corner here, and that it's intersecting here on the edge with this line. Pressure at the top from your finger and at the bottom from my thumb. And I cut the tip of my thumb off, so please forgive it because it does look like a mess. And once these are all lined up, you're going to draw your line starting in the middle and working your way down. That pressure is really important because otherwise the fabric will shift and you can end up distorting it. And that's when your lines start to go squiggly and they don't match. The worst line on this to draw is the corners because there's two edges and there's not a lot of fabric 
to contact the ruler. Now my iron fabric is bunching up a bit here in the corner. So I'm just going to lift my ruler and I'm just going to smooth out my basting spray. Maybe is just not quite strong enough in that little section. So I'm putting as much pressure as I can at the points to keep it nice and flat because it will shift and that's the line there. And then we're just going to repeat this across the block. Take your time in lining these up. This one is tricky because the ruler is not long enough. Please do get a longer ruler to do this. It's much easier to film this with a shorter ruler, which is why I'm doing it this way. If you don't have a longer ruler though, don't worry. Once I'm lined up with as much as I can get lined up, I'm going to start to draw my line. I'm making sure that I've got pressure on this corner so that it doesn't go walkies. Working my way down as far as comfortable. Don't go all the way to the edge of the ruler though when you do this because that will make it harder. Stop maybe two inches or an inch and a half or so. And then we're going to just slide the ruler trying very hard not to change the position of it. If it does change, that's okay. Just line it back up with the line that you've just drawn up here and then continue down. When it comes to this hand, use your thumb to pivot. Put weight in your thumb, press with the fingertips there, move the thumb down to here. If it shifts, just adjust and then continue to draw your line. So you can use your thumb as a pivot. It's hard for me because this thumb is sore. Okay, so we're going to finish drawing all the lines in this direction. If you are comfortable sewing, you can eyeball these intersections as in you don't need to draw these lines, you can just sew them in. I'm not comfortable, so I like my lines marked. But if you feel comfortable, go for it. Now, this again, last little corner is just a little tricky. Scoot your hand up, prying pressure down. Stop this from shifting about. Okay, so you can see we've got half of that done. Now, just flip it. Again, start somewhere small to be comfortable. So I'm going to start here and then just draw your line, same as you did before. Now, classic example, I'm too busy talking, not paying attention. This is wrong. This is not right. This should not intersect across two. It should only go like that. You should join this up here. So this is wrong, okay? So I'm going to do this so that I know not to sew that, okay? So don't worry, if you, you know, mistakes happen. Mistakes happen. What should have been is this corner to this corner. And this is why I don't like doing this with angles because I get so easily confused. And even, big, even with a line showing me where to sew, I got confused, okay? So don't worry about it. Again, make sure you got pressure at either side of the ruler because we do not want this fabric to shift. We want our corners to be nice and crisp. See the diamond shapes now? Yes, we're on the right track. Do really take your time with these intersections because you really do want these to be nice and crisp. Pattern will prefers crisp corners. This corner is really shifting on me. So I've just adjusted my thumb down to really put pressure on the ruler. Okay. The, this has shifted a little bit. So this has actually got no bassing underneath it. So I'm going to have to just fix this. Okay. That's enough talking for me. Let's just finish these lines. And we're done. So apart from my oopsie daisy moment, mm -mm, you can see Big diamonds, you can see little diamonds, and you can see the intersections. And remember, you can draw on these and write notes to yourself for when you're sewing. Just remember not to sew your notes. And this is my mistake here, and you can see I've just put lines through it to tell me not to sew this. Okay, so that was the prep. No angles are necessary. If you want to make that denser, just put the lines closer together in your grit. I line this up. You can see here, this is the, the less dense one, and this is the more dense one. So you can see there's more vertical and horizontal lines in one box of the less dense version. If you want denser, put the horizontal and the vertical lines closer together and it'll create a much denser design. So when it comes to the sewing steps in a second, I'm going to show you with help and talking through it, the less dense version. And then I'm going to just show you a time lapse of sewing the dense version. So you can see that it's exactly the same as sewing the other version. There's just more lines to sew. So let's look at the sewing. So I want to start this on this line here because this goes all the way down to this corner. I want to do that to secure this. So I'm going to 
start here on the edge and work my way down. Taking my time with this because this is important to get the lines intersecting in the right place. And then I'm just going to support this with my finger and so right off the edge, cut my threads. And then I'm going to do the same on this corner here to secure because then we're going to try and sew as much as we can without cutting threads. So starting on the edge, lining up, sew down. I'm not using a securing thread function, I prefer not to use that. I like to secure my edges by doing a zigzag stitch all the way around. If you like to do a securing function at the start and the end, that's absolutely fine. If you need to get a stiletto to stabilize this, by all means, use the stiletto to keep it stable. And just take your time. I prefer just to use my hand to keep it stable. Okay, now cut threads. Quick interlude in the sewing. I am using a straight stitch plate, so it means it's only got a single hole. Using my walking foot, a straight stitch set to two and a half. I am wearing quilting gloves because it's easier to keep it stable. And I'm using a 50 weight white Gutterman thread. And I'm using white because white shows up on navy fabric and it shows up nicely on camera so that you can see what I'm doing. Now here's the fun bit, this is the game. This is where we see how much of this we can sew without cutting threads. So I'm going to start here. You can start anywhere you like. Starting on the edge, working my way down. And you can see where, once I'm at the edge, I'm going to pivot, and then I'm going to sew the next line. And then I'm going to get to the edge here, and I'm going to slow down, readjust my hands, take my time. It's gone off the edge, not a problem. Just turn, keeping the block touching your needle. Take your next couple of stitches and away you go. I always like to slow down as I come to edges, just in case anything happens. I don't want to overshoot it. And I just keep pivoting. As long as there's a diagonal line for me to sew, I keep pivoting and keep going. And you can usually get quite a good amount of this sewn without having to cut your threads. Now I've gone off the edge, but again in a real quilt you would have backing and batting over ridge. As in the, it would be bigger than the quilt top, so you would be sewing into your backing, excess backing and batting, so that's not a problem. I do like to use my fingers and thumbs to stabilize this, so I keep them either, like you can see, pushing pressure down through my fingertips and my thumbs here to guide or I like to keep my hands in a triangle position around the walking foot and gently guide the fabric not pushing I let the sewing machine pull the fabric through and once I get to a point where I need to adjust which is usually when my fingers are kind of in line with the middle of the walking foot I will do that but I'm just because I'm in a corner here I'm just stabilizing the back which is off camera just so that it doesn't wobble. And so it's something just to get used to. It's just to adjust your hands as required. Sometimes you need them at the front, sometimes you need them at the side, sometimes you need them at the back, just to stabilize as it goes through your sewing machine. And in those instances, just be mindful of where your hands and fingers are. You don't want to... I have caught my nail on this little screw here before. It is incredibly painful. Highly I recommend avoiding that. You can see here, this is a line that I drew that was wrong and I've just, I've marked it with almost like crosses through it so I know not to sew that line. So we're doing well, we haven't cut threads and I would say we are 50% of the way through the diagonal lines. And hopefully you can start to see the diamonds that are appearing. Uh, but we've come to the end of where we can sew. Oh, well. Don't worry. So let's see, let's start this corner and see how far that takes us before we have to cut threads. Can we get it all done without cutting threads? Oh, 
I'm one stitch short here, so I'm just going to take another one, which is going to go off the edge, that's okay, but it just wasn't quite lining up. When I'm sewing this as well, I'm not looking at the needle. I'm not looking at the needle because by the time I, by the time we're at the needle, it's too late. It's already making the stitch. So you can't really do anything to adjust. And if you suddenly jerk, you're going to end up with a wonky stitch. So instead, I'm looking about here and using what's coming ahead to guide me. And that will give me time to adjust. You may even need to look a little bit further ahead. But it gives you the time that you need to adjust what's going on with the direction of the quilt block. Okay, we're getting to the last bit here, so we're going to have to cut our threads. But I think we've caught all the lines that we need to catch. Let's just double check in a second. There we go. Have we got them all? Did we get them all? We're going to start with the vertical ones first. So you may find that in the course of stitching that your lines for your diamonds have just veered a little bit off of your lines, which is not a problem at all. But this is where looking ahead rather than looking at your needle benefits you because you can just start to direct it towards where you should be so that the lines intersect. So I am just, you can see I'm sewing just to the side of my line so that my lines intersect through the diamonds. It doesn't matter so much in the edges because it will be hidden by the binding. But when I am sewing these lines down through the diamonds, I really am trying very hard to get them to intersect because otherwise it does look a little bit off. Okay, so that's the only time you'll see me worrying too much about it and this is when it's going to be visibly noticeable. This one's not too bad, the lines are going straight through. And you know what, sometimes it happens. Sometimes the ruler just slips ever so slightly when you're moving it, or your line is just a little bit too thick and you sew just a fraction of an inch too far and it puts it off a little bit. And so this is where having the skills to see what's coming up and just adjust as you sew are really helpful and handy because then you don't have to unpick stitches. So you can see I'm again just sewing to the side of my line to make sure that I intersect. Could, if you like, stitch along the edge of this to the next one without cutting threads. I'm just choosing to cut threads. So you see here, this is, this is a double line. This is what I was talking about. The ruler slipped when I drew it and I realized that it was wrong. So I just drew another line. And when I come to sew that in a minute, I'm gonna have to be very careful to make sure that I don't go wonky. Okay, so that's our first set of lines. Now we just need to sew the remaining line. So we're just going to flip it 90 degrees. Now again, we're going to take our time here because we want these to intersect nicely. Oh, and we've come unthreaded. Taking my time as I reach the intersection, aiming for the middle. This line looks good, so it seems to be intersecting very nicely. Went slightly off, but that's okay. We've just adjusted. Let's just have a quick look. So this is good. This is good. This is very good. This is excellent. Okay, so they're good. I'm happy with those. So let's just finish the last two. Again, these are all good, so I'm very happy. Now, this is the double line, so this is the one we've got to be careful of. It's looking like the middle of the double lines intersects through, so we're aiming for the middle of these two lines. Okay, that one went through, that's good. This one, are we gonna get it? Yep. Next one, looking good. Excellent. Last one. Yes, got it. You can see I'm right in the middle of those two lines. And we're done. So that was painless apart from my needle losing its thread. And you can see how lovely that is. That looks great. 
Now I'm going to do a time lapse and show you sewing the denser version of this with no talking, just sewing. Okay, so that was how to sew the less dense and the dense version. And hopefully that was helpful to see the dense version and how easy it is to still sew that. Let's talk about some things to watch out for now. This kind of design, I like symmetrical edges. I like the edges to be the same. And when it comes to sewing this, you know, I like to try and save threads where I can. So you can sew a lot of this without breaking threads, particularly when you're sewing on a big quilt, which has a bigger backing and batting. You can kind of sew off the edge, pivot, and then come back onto the next line. And so that will save you thread. Now, I was tempted to take out the mistake that I made and just kind of hide it with the magic of editing. But actually, I thought it was useful for you to see that sometimes you can just make a mistake. So to take your time and just really make sure that you're sure where the line is going. And I just cross through my line and I know not to sew that line. And that line will come out when I wash these. The lines will all wash out, so I don't need to worry about it. So if you do make a mistake, don't panic. Just give yourself some kind of indication not to sew that line and then continue on. Or if it really bugs you, you know, whatever your pen or pencil says, just rub the line off, erase it, and then start again. You will find it helpful if you are using a pencil to keep a sharp point on the pencil. I find that when I draw with quilting pencil to mark lines, as the pencil gets blunter, the lines get thicker and thicker. And then I have to adjust and try and either sew on the edges or try and sew down the middle. And that's just too much stress because we're trying to get a fairly accurate grid here. So sharp point on your pencil will help for that. But if you do find that your lines are thick, then I would suggest either sewing down one or the other sides of the lines and doing it consistently across your whole block. When you sew down the middle, you start to get this happening. So 
uh, pick a side and then stick to it for the whole quilt and that will keep it consistent. And then as I mentioned, if you use a matching thread that matches the color of your background, this will create lovely texture. But if you do want this to pop, pick something that contrasts heavily. And if you use a puffy batting, as in a batting that's got a really thick loft, that will give a really lovely textured quilt. Can you tell that I like texture? Now, let's look at some example quilts that you can make using this design. Alrighty then, up first, we have our favorite circle quilt. Now this is a very modern quilt design as it is anyway. So I feel like this either needs a really modern quilting design or it needs something that's very all over. And I think that this diamond grid works for the very all over category. So you can see this is just divided up. I haven't paid a lot of attention to where the lines are falling. You certainly could pay more attention to it, but I have just gone for very general placement. I have tried to get symmetry, so hopefully you can see my mouse cursor on screen, but I've tried to go for symmetry on the left and the right side so that it's the same. I do prefer that when I do this design because I think it's neater and tidier looking. But you can see like the lines aren't really through the middle of the circles, they're kind of chopped haphazard, and so that adds to the feeling of this kind of all over design. I've said before previously that, you know, quilting design should either complement the piecing or they should just go all over the piecing. And this is one of these instances where it just goes all over the piecing. Admittedly, it doesn't look right. And you're probably looking at this thinking that's, it doesn't feel right, but that's purely because the thread or, you know, the stitch lines that I have done are, they wouldn't stick out like that. If I was actually going to quilt this, I would use a very complementary thread color that would more blend into the background and just add texture. So this is definitely one of these instances where the digital representation, I don't think fully does justice to what this would look like on an actual quilt. But I, I think this is a great one. And I think this is nice, quick all over design for a quilt like this. And it does kind of create features. You know, the big diamond shapes are quite nice as well. If you have OCD, you might prefer to plan this out a little bit more so that you would have your vertical and horizontal lines intersecting through the middle of circles and your diamonds cutting up to create secondary patterns. But for me as an all over design, I think this is fine. Next up now to show you this design that working on a rectangular quilt, this is just a basic rail fence quilt with some sashing. Again, we have symmetry on the left and right sides and the top and the bottom as well so that everything is nice and tidy. Now this one, I did pay more attention to the placement of my lines and it did take a little bit more time to do this because you have to make sure that your grid is gonna be the right shape so that the lines intersect correctly because otherwise you don't get the diamond shape. You end up getting more of a, a normal crosshatch. So you've got to be careful how you plan your grid. But you can see the lines either go through the middle of a block or they're on the sides of the block. And you either get a diamond in the middle of the block or you get an X through the block. This time through the digital representation, I think does do the design justice. And I think this is great fast and easy for a lot, a big quilt like this. Put these lines, you know, five, six inches apart. You've got a lovely fluffy design that would look great. Add lots of lovely texture to the quilt. Oh, let's talk about this one. Now I spent a lot of time working on this one because I wanted this to be just perfect. The Carpenter Star is a lovely design, makes a lovely quilt anyway. And when you couple it up with piecing, it really accents and really draws the eye in. It creates just a stunning, visual look here. So let's dissect this a little bit. I've made sure that my grid was smack bang through the middle. So it cuts the star up into four quadrants. And so you get this lovely, lovely diamond in the middle that really just makes the center star pop. And then it's framed by this outer square. And then if you look at the outsides of this, you have almost like a diamond border running along the outside to frame the center star. Okay, so you can see why I spent a lot of time planning this to get this to work like this. And then there's these little points here on the star points where all these lines intersect. They feel like little starbursts popping out. I think that this all works together and complements the design. Now to get this to contrast, as in the stitching lines to contrast, I had to use black so that it would stand out because otherwise it was quite difficult to see and you wouldn't have got the full visual effect. So I'm not for one suggesting that you would use such a dark thread to quilt this, you might, and it could look amazing. I would probably need to do a little test first, but I think if you had a thread that blended in, I think this texture on this quilt would be absolutely stunning. And I'm quite tempted, 
I know, another quilt to make, but I am quite tempted to make a little 36 inch square wall hanging version of this just to see how this turns out. I mean, by the time we get to the end of the series, my quilts that I want to make list is going to be about 4,000 long, but I do think that this is one of these projects where you're just like, oh, I really have to make that one because that's just going to, and you imagine that as a backdrop of the video. I just wanted to show you the difference between when you kind of just place the lines without thinking about the placement versus when you're very meticulous and very particular about where the lines land and just the effect that that creates on a quilt. Now, slightly differently, I want to show you this where it doesn't work. Normally, I'm always talking about this looks great, this fits in well, this blends, but in actually this instance, this doesn't work, at least in my opinion. I did spend a lot of time doing this one as well. I really wanted my grid to intersect through these blocks. I wanted lines that were intersecting through the middle, uh, sorry, on the edges of the blocks, cutting it up. But I just could not get the grid to fit so that the line, the diamond lines were the right angle. And I mean, I literally, I mean, I spent about 45 minutes trying to get this to work and I couldn't get it to work. So I just placed a random all over grid. And I'm in two opinions about this, okay? Digitally, it doesn't work for me. This doesn't work. This line here, if it was in the middle of the block, I think that would be great. You know, these lines, if they were in the middle of here or they, they were in the middle of the background, I think that would be very nice as well and that would work. But this is either going to be a design that you're going to do this and you're going to be like, oh no, that needs to be unpicked. Or, wow, that's amazing. And I can't quite decide. So in my opinion, digitally, this does not work. It might work in person, as in a real quilt. I don't know. It would have to make it and try it. So yeah, the jury is out on this one. And maybe, maybe I just was having a bad day and I needed to put it down and come back to it and I could have got it to work. But I did think it would be helpful to show you sometimes things that don't necessarily work or might not work so that you can also get an idea because it's important in this series to be talking about visual examples that you can see and you can kind of see what it looks like before you put any thread into the fabric. But I think it's also important to see things where you're like, oh no, let's not put thread into the fabric for this design. A little bit different. Hopefully you appreciate that and you can kind of understand. And you know, if you think this looks great, then I would love to see how it turns out if you do this in a real quote. Just send me an email with a picture because as I say, I do think this is either going to be absolutely amazing or absolutely yuck. So something to think about and contemplate on for these quotes. And I hope you like them. So that was our diamond grid versions one and two. I really hope you enjoyed that and you are find those example quilts helpful. In the next video, design number 12, we are going to be looking at X's. It adds just a slightly different feel to a quilt. It's a very kind of modern feeling one. So I hope you will enjoy that. Now, the reason we're making all these quoting samples is when we are finishing our quilts and we get to that dreaded quote is desired, we can pick up this little flick book of examples and we can flick through it and find something and get our project finished fast. All of these designs, they're designed to be as simple and easy to follow and quick to sew. They don't need lots of complicated prep. They don't need lots of marking and, and you know, weird things that you have to do. I'm trying to make them as simple and easy to follow so they are quick and you can get it done. There's also going to be a book that accompanies this series and it will be coming out later this year and it's going to have all of this kind of stuff in it. It's going to have nine more designs plus it'll be packed with example quotes and pictures and step-by-step -step instructions and it's going to be a fabulous resource to have in your studio. So if you are interested in getting that book there's a link in the description below for the pre-orders and if you sign up you can get access to that when it's announced. If you're sewing along with me in this series I would love for you to share your progress on Instagram using the hashtag this is how you quote it and tag me the color one quilter so I can see what you've been working on and I can share it as well. And then finally, if you found this video helpful, it would really help me if you would consider giving it a thumbs up and then subscribe and click that bell so you get notified when the next video in the series comes out. So I had fun with that one, one of my favorite designs and I really hope that you enjoyed sewing it and you'll give it a try. So take care of yourself and I will see you next time.